Hey, Gary Cruz with AmazeStudios.com here. And if you want to learn more about the Yolo Box Pro, then watch this video. Hi, Gary Cruz with AmazeStudios.com here. And today I'm going to go over the Yolo Box Pro. This isn't going to be a comprehensive review because I'm just opening it. If you're new to my channel, I go over live streaming technology and tips and tricks. So if that's of interest to you, consider subscribing to my channel. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get this opened. So this is the Yolo Box Pro. Uh, I know I'm a little late to the game. However, it never hurts to get a new perspective on a piece of technology that you might be interested in. If you're not familiar with the Yolo Box Pro and you're looking into live streaming, uh, this allows you to connect multiple cameras. It has touchscreen control. It does it in 1080p. Allows you to have multi-view. It has some overlaying watermarks and a built-in audio mixer. Again, this is the Yellow Box Pro. It comes with a screen protector. And this is a fairly good size unit. Let's see here. Let's go over the specs. This is the Yellow Box Pro. Uh, the input is five volts, three amps. You can also do nine volts, two amps, and 12 volts, one, one and a half amps. Looking at the connections, we've got HDMI 1, 2, and 3. We've got a USB, Ethernet, HDMI out, USB Type-C, a headphone jack, and two mic inputs, and a USB-C. Looks like it's uh, for charging. On the left, there's nothing here. On the top, there's a power button, and there is a slot here for a SIM card, and there is an SD card. And there's a quarter inch, looks like a, a, a typical headphone, not headphone jack, but a tripod mount. And that's it on that. Let's take a look at what's inside here. Nice quick guide. Please read and understand all operating instructions. Okay. Here's a user manual. Oh, nice. It comes with a hot shoe mount. And uh, let's take a look at this. So if you look at this, uh, you can connect multiple cameras, up to three cameras, and also uh, another camera via USB or a webcam. And you can also do a RTMP pull from another source. Uh, and that's if you're signed in. And it supports 4G, Ethernet, Wi-Fi. You can stream to multiple platforms. And you can also get videos and, and graphics from an SD card. Okay, so this is a pretty nice cold shoe mount. We've got a USB type A to USB type C cable. Looks like a USB C to USB C. Comes with an Allen wrench and a SIM card remover. I'm not even bother trying to take that out. And it looks like there's nothing else inside the box. So let's go ahead and get this powered on. I want to go ahead and plug in an existing USB-C power that I have. I'm not going to use the screen protector. I just found screen protectors in general are really hard to smooth out uh, the bubbles on the screen. And uh, I'll usually keep that fairly protected in, in a case. So we have a USB-C power. Yeah, well, let's see. I think it does have a built-in battery. So let's do that first. I'll turn this on. See if there's some juice in there out of the factory. I have to hold it a little bit longer. There we go. Interesting, it's upside down. Oh wait, maybe that's the bottom. Here we go. YOLO Live. Or YOLO Live. The battery is at 95%. Let's go ahead and go through the prompts. I'm going to say next. And the time zone, we're minus eight. So I'll scroll down to minus eight. Los Angeles, it says nine, minus seven for some reason. Okay, please check network and network connections on settings page. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, so over here under account, there's Wi Fi. We want to use Wi Fi. And behind the scenes, this is using an Android operating system. And let me go ahead and put my username and password. Now it's connected. Click on OK. Let's go ahead and update the 
OS while I'm in here. So how do we do that? Uh, I see the language, the version, help center, restore factory settings, uh, network settings, but it's not asking me to. Okay. Oh, maybe this is my registration. So let's go ahead and put my email address. It's asking for a verification code. Set my password. Upgrade. A new version of Yellowbox Pro software is available now. What's new in version 1.06? Adding two videos from SD card. You can now add a total of three sources, two videos and one PDF from the SD card. There's a score scoreboard countdown timer is now available, taking your sport live production to the next level and remove the limit on how many characters can be displayed when adding rolling captions. And just in case you missed the updates, you can now select encoding modes, including CBR, VBR, CQ, and manually adjust the bitrate. There's built a built-in chroma key finally available on the Pro, and now you can customize your graphic overlays, including editing the fonts, colors, and backgrounds of your lower thirds and scoreboard rolling captions. And you can now test internet speed before live streaming via network test account. That's pretty cool. What I heard about this is what I've seen online. What I heard about this and what I've seen online is that Yolobox really does a good job of taking user feedback and incorporate them into updates. So I really appreciate that from that, this company. All right, let's go ahead and click on OK. And let's go through the upgrade process. OK, it says, please check the network connections on the settings page, but it looks like it has a Wi-Fi connection. It says connected. Oh, there's another one here. It says, a new version of Yellowbox firmware. You may have not even noticed the HDMI out bug is a very small portion of devices that's been fixed. You can now output, output your HDMI signal, both audio and video to A10 mini, which I have, live view encoders, TVs, and camera monitors with confidence. Shout out to the Yolo Live engineering team for the awesomeness and devotion, just in case you missed our few updates. Okay, so it goes over. So let's click, click OK again, and it's going through the upgrade process again. This time it looks a little faster. It's getting about 10, or as before, it was slower. It was about 5 to 6. It's peaking out at 13 megs per second. I want to adjust the brightness, but I'm afraid to do anything else right now, so I'll let it do its thing and then I'll adjust the brightness for the rest of the video. Okay, it's uh, rebooting again. 25 minutes of your time will be just upgrading the firmware. So just keep that in mind that you probably won't be able to just turn it on and go. You might want to apply the latest updates. Again, it's highly recommended that you do uh, before getting started with this. Request error, please try O's oh, because it didn't. It seems to be having issues with Wi-Fi. I wonder if I should just have this wired so every time it reboots, because it looks like it takes a while to actually get connected first. Let me see if I can find the bright there's another upgrade. Wow. Now, <laughs> this, this is what's driving me nuts. It would be nice that if it would just go from the base version all the way to what is now 1.2.1 versus having to go through these incremental upgrades because this is kind of cumbersome. But it looks like in version 1.2.1, they fixed the bug where the video gets unexpectedly pixelated on weak internet and live streaming the standard bug fixes and performance improvements, and then again, another, some additional information about the live stream. So let's go ahead and go through this process again. You know what, this time, what I'll do is I'm gonna connect an ethernet cord to see if this helps. So let's get this connected via ethernet. And uh, before I do, before I do that, let's uh, see if I can adjust the brightness. Hmm. 
So it's showing Ethernet. Let's um, go here, Network Settings. Ethernet, it's on. Okay. It doesn't show the IP address. Uh, let's see, where are the display settings? Okay, forget it, I can't find it. I'll just go ahead and do the install. Well, that went a lot faster. Oh, <laughs> now it's a slide down to just screen brightness. Nice, all right, so let's do that. All right, now it should be a little more legible. So one of the big benefits of the YOLO Live is that it has a built-in battery. And this is really helpful when you're streaming on location and on the go. I have a Sony PXW Z90. It's a camcorder, which also has a battery. Let's get this battery plugged in. And let's say if you're gonna do a multicam setup, I've got a Sony A7S III right here, and we'll use the HDMI out for that. But let's say we want someone out roaming on the field at a sports game. There is these Teradex Sparks that allow you to connect this wirelessly. So you get the HDMI going on a transmitter here, and then having that transmitted to this yellow box wirelessly. So that's one of the things I want to try out. Let's go ahead and get everything connected. So I'm going to walk you through this process. This is the Spark Teradek 4K transmitter. Let's go ahead and get this connected. Screw it on. It comes with a hot shoe connector as well. Uh, let's go ahead and put this on top of the cam this Sony camcorder. I'm gonna face it towards me so I can see what's going on. All right, so I've got the transmitter on top. Let's grab an HDMI cable. One of the benefits of this Teradex Spark 4K is that it has its own battery that can last up to 90 minutes. Now, I've had it last a lot longer. I haven't tested the in, in built-in battery, but I've had a three-hour event, and this lasted the whole time because I used a USB-C battery bank that powered this transmitter. I've got the Spark connected, and now we're gonna connect the receiver to the yellow box. So let's use another HDMI cable here. And we can go ahead and go full battery operated here, but I do have a power outlet for the USB-C. So let's go ahead and plug that in and turn this on. Okay, so it's powering on. And let's do the same with the camera. Okay, power this on right over here. And it's waiting for a signal. So it says it's sending video. This is now receiving video. And let's go ahead and just click on monitor mode for right now. Ah, it looks like it has some overlays here to kind of go over some of the basics. So you've got chroma keying, if that's on or not, and you can skip this process. Let's click on skip. And here we go. We've got a wireless connection to this Let's see how far this goes. So I'm gonna to go to the end of the room over there and then film back here. And then you can see live the connection from this tear deck. Now, if there's any jitteriness, it's because this iPhone is providing video to my Ecamm Live via NDI. So somehow I'm gonna show it without any delay. So let's... Um, yeah, see, there's a delay. All right, so since there's a delay from this overhead camera with via NDI, I'm gonna switch that to a wired connection into Ecamm Live. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in. We got a little USB 
USB-C hub here. Plug this in. And then I'll plug this into the camera. Okay, there's not much of a delay anymore. All right, so here's what I'm gonna test. I'm testing this Teradex Spark connection, wirelessly connected, or it's gonna be wirelessly sending HDMI to the receiver that's going into the HDMI input of the uh, yellow box. So let's go over here and go, I'm gonna go all the way to the end of that area, but this can go 500 feet. That's more than the football field. So I've tested this out and been really happy with the Teradex Spark. So let's see how this works. Okay, so that's the setup back over there. I'm zooming in. Zoom out. Let's walk back. Okay, so that's the wireless connection. Now there might be a little bit latency in the in the display, but from what I've seen, if it's even with a wired HDMI connection, it should be fine. This is the Sony A7S III. I've got an HDMI connector here. Now I can hear a, a little, a, some fan noise coming from, from the yellow box. It's just subtle, but I can hear it. I've got this all powered with a V-mount battery by FX Lion. And here's camera two. Camera one which is this wireless camera and camera two. So as you can see, I've got a wired Sony a7S III, a wireless camcorder that can be easily moved around on location. And I have them both connected to the Yellow Box Live. All right, let's go over some of the features of the Yellow Box Live. I'm just going to go through this as a new person. So we went through the setup and everything from the installing the firmware. It looks like there is some, if we look at this, these are the video sources. If we click on the next one, that is probably going live. Here's where you can get the, the audio. So let's get the audio from HDMI 1. I don't see, check, check. Okay, here's the audio monitor. So if it's automatic, I guess it depends on which camera it's, it's connecting to. And you can see there's multiple sources for audio, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, HDMI 3, USB video, USB audio. It can be a, a mixer, uh, line in, mic in, local video 1, local video 2, and the live stream. Uh, here's where the scoreboard so if we click on display, we can move that here. Um, and then you can rename the team accordingly. Let's see if I make this full screen. And here's the team numbers. If I reduce that again. So let's say someone is out on the field using the wireless camera. Then we can use like a wired zoom camera. So you can have a combination of both wired and wireless with this. Next are the chat capabilities. And then these are some additional settings. So let's take a look at the video source. Click to switch or double click to switch. So click the switches like this. And if we do double click. So I guess if you, you don't want to accidentally click it, you have to double click it. I like to click the switch. Let's do SD card video switching settings continue playing when switching, resume first frame, and pause when switching, and then pause when switching. So if you have a video playing from the card, these are the options. SD card management, there's not an SD card in there right now. Program out. Uh, so if we want to send the program out over, oh, let's do this. Let's connect a USB capture card and see what it looks like here so you can see the settings directly. Okay, so I have a HDMI cable that's going to go into my Ecamm Live that I'm using to record this session. And let's do HDMI out. Ta-da! Okay, so now I've got clean output. Very cool. And let's do a picture-picture. 
this picture picture I'm moving around here I'll just leave it there just uh, uh, because this is coming from Ecamm Live and now um, I can show you what I'm doing on the actual device okay so right now it is showing kind of the behind the scenes but if I click program out it will show you exactly what's on the camera that's selected so here's HDMI 1 this is the wireless camera and that's the view from the wireless camera and zoom in on the Christmas tree echo turn on Christmas tree okay video source transitions cut is by default if we click on fade it will fade between those two and you can adjust the duration right now is at one and a half seconds let's move this down to half a second so we got a quicker transition okay between the two uh, oh yeah so you know what let me show you let's go back to show the settings here oh you know what let's move this here Back to the video source transitions, we've got wipe. So if we switch between the two, there is a wipe. There is a directional wipe. And uh, you know what, let me turn off the scoreboard here. So if we go back here, and where is that scoreboard? Scoreboard display, let's turn that off. Go back over here and go back to the transitions we've got translation okay and then we've got a window slice they look like blinds simple zoom cross zoom that's kind of cool squeeze I don't think I'll use that. Flip page. Oh, what's on the back of that? Let's uh, reduce the speed here to two and a half. Oh, very cool. It's just like a, a white page that shows the previous image. Cube. Okay. And that's it video output mode we've got HDMI out and what's DP out I don't know what that is no I don't want to do the reboot so let's just leave that encoding setting we've got the constant bitrate we've got a CQ and VBR the bitrate bit rate looks pretty high I typically do mine at 8 kilobits per second the frames per second, um, I like to have it at 29.97 or 30. Okay, done. And then uh, let's see what else. Recording limits. The video will be recorded and saved every 10 minutes, 20, 30, 60, and continuously. And to prevent losing the complete recording due to unexpected interruptions, we suggest you choose the defaulted 10 minute recording option. Okay, so we'll just leave it at that. I usually just record onto an external recorder like an Atomos Ninja, but if you have the SD card, you can record the stream. And that covers the video monitor section, which is nice. Let's go ahead and create a stream. I'm going to move this over here. And as soon as I switched views, the fan died off. So it looks like that took a little bit of processing power just to go through those settings. Let's click on plus and we're going to go ahead and create a live stream and I haven't connected this to anything so I'm curious how this works. So we'll call this uh, YOLO test. I'll leave that optional schedule. We'll do that today and time and that is now. Let's do now. Create. Okay, so um, we want it p.m. So let's just do that in the future here. Three, two, it is 2.19 now, so let's do 2.25. How about that? OK, 
Okay, let's create. And uh, where do we put our destinations? Here we go. So let's go ahead and click onto YouTube. A link. And it's asking to accept this. Now it wants me to log in, which is interesting. Instead of using a device login, where you just put in the pin code, it's going to go ahead and ask me to log in. Uh, my router says a generic brand Android device just connected to your home network. And that must be the Yellow Live. So before you get started out in a field, it's a good idea that you configure all the settings and get comfortable with the device at home because it's going to ask you to configure a lot of things. You don't want to be fiddling with this out in the field in front of your clients. So definitely become familiar with the product and comfortable enough before you actually do this live. And let's go ahead and allow. And it says success. Click on close. All right, so we're going to go unlisted and click on done. Now it says it's ready. Now I'm curious, I want to do a speed test. Let's see, how do I get to do the speed test? I don't remember how you get to there. Let's go ahead and switch to this camera. Ooh, I don't like that transition. So let's go ahead and make that transition fade. All right, so if I want to add a overlay or a lower thirds, I want to click on this button here, which is the bottom left. Click on the plus sign. Let's do a lower thirds. And here are some of the default ones. And uh, let's reselect a template. Let's, and then let's go ahead and say, uh, Merry Christmas. And let's go ahead and click on this and move that down. How do we move that overlay down? All right, how do I edit this overlay? Oh, there we go. You have to hold the button down. All right, let's move that down here. Amaze. So here's how you toggle the overlay on and off. Very cool. Uh, let's go live. Click OK. And I'm going to check on my Mac here. Let's see what it looks like on YouTube and go to my YouTube studio. And here's the yellow test. Ah, there it is. We got an excellent connection. All right, let's go ahead and test out the comments here. So I'm going to say Merry Christmas. Let's go ahead and click on the comments icon. And here's one from MA Studio. So if we click on that, that's what the overlay looks like. There's a little bit of delay. It looks like it's maybe about 30 seconds or so. And that is just from YouTube. So it's switched over to the Christmas tree. Never mind the overblown background. And the lower thirds is going to pull up right there. Very cool. Now, before, this is something that I used to do in Ecamm Live. I'm really excited about this because now instead of having to work with the laptop, I can just have this set up with me with a much more portable setup and be able to do a lot of the same things that I was able to do in Ecamm Live, which also includes doing the overlay for lower thirds from comments from, from YouTubers or Facebook comments. This is really cool. I'm excited about that. Okay, so it looks like we have about 4 kilobits per second, 30 frames per second, zero drops, and we've been live for three minutes. Okay, so this should wrap up my overview of the Yellow Box Live, including the unboxing and some initial setup. Uh, hopefully this is also different from the other videos you've seen to see a wireless option with the Teradex Spark here and having it also wired uh, to use this out in the field. I will continue to test this, so if this is of interest to you, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. If you're really interested in live streaming gear, please consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching. Yeah.